and distinguished guests and speakers, uh, members of the Belgian Federal Parliament, His Excellency Ambassador of the OEC, and all the guests here uh, with us today. We are honored uh, on behalf of IDARA, the European Development and Research Academy, to welcome you in this special event. Strategically important uh, region will be critical in the, in the future of geopolitics as well. So very much looking forward to exploring um, these topics with all of you uh, today. Um, the, the, the way I approach this subject is I've, I've lived uh, more than half of my life in um, Asian, um, in different countries, but I also lived in, uh, in China, in Taiwan, uh, in North America. So, and I've, I've seen the world from different perspectives, from different eyes. And uh, so my, my interest is trying to uh, see how we can all get along and how we can unite. Specifically on the NATO-China relationship and also on the US-China rivalry in the South China Sea. Uh, I come from Italy, so uh, we talk a lot, but I know I'm before the, the coffee, so we try to be brief and quicker. But I thank Theo uh, for the uh, spot yeah, on NATO. <laughs> ah, oh wow, so you speak some Italian, great. Yeah, we will talk in Italian later for the coffee. So, um, as uh, the moderator said, I spent five years in NATO as an analyst. So, uh, you know, when you work in NATO, uh, you are always NATO. Because uh, NATO, we forget about that, but is a political military alliance. My thanks, of course, go to all the three speakers. Uh, it has been very thought-provoking for me. And uh, I will, of course, uh, not necessarily be speaking on behalf of the OIC because, you know, I am also a career diplomat with uh, interest in multilateral diplomacy. But when uh, I would just make uh, two quick uh, points when we are talking about threats to peace in Asia. Jordan, uh, for the former Minister of, uh, of Interior of Jordan was, was there, there was a big delegation from Morocco, from Tunisia, and they said, yeah, your report is good, but you don't have to teach us uh, lessons on human rights. Um, we just want peace in the Middle East. And then there was a lot of fuss about Israel, like always. Interesting. I said that um, for me there's no problem to talk about peace. I want peace um, for everybody, and certainly I want peace in North Africa, the Mediterranean, and the Middle East. That's in our own interest, own European interest. Uh, allow me first to, to notice that in an era where manufacturing uh, has become a global endeavor and uh, international trade leads to growth and prosperity, and we all adhere to the fact that uh, developing countries are benefiting and for the case of the international trade. Even those who don't, don't agree with the liberty of trade are accepting this fact. Oil to China uh, every day. This oil is essential for Chinese factories uh, to produce products and to ship to all over the world, not just the Middle East. So, uh, technically, when uh, Iran or Iranian militias, uh, militias fire drones or missiles at Saudi oil facilities and interrupt our supply, first of all, as we all know, prices will uh, go up, interruption of oil supply shortages might happen, the same when uh, Iran uh, intercepts oil shipments through the Gulf, um, it is China that is being uh, impacted. And another reason is, um, at the moment, there are four paralyzed Arab countries. Those are Syria, Lebanon, Yemen, and uh, Iraq. Uh, and they're paralyzed in terms in front of uh, Chinese products, as well as European and American products, not because of Saudi Arabia, but because of Iran malign activity. Uh, if you see the recent uh, American administration as having um, applied uh, a sort of disenfranchisement in the Middle East, uh, the last one, I promise, is um, what role the EU um, you see playing in the whole Saudi Iranian rapprochement on paper. Um, interest and questions on the topic. Uh, it's actually the EU that has been for a very long time encouraging uh, debate and uh, and talks. Um, not just the EU, even uh, the previous um, uh, US administration. I was surprisingly shocked with the uh, under presence and un under representation from the Asian community here except from us and the lady over there. But... Uh, <clears throat> the Middle East is China. Uh, sorry, the Middle East is in Asia, so... Yeah. Right, right. I'm not from Asia. Oh, that's great, that's great. Okay. 
I stand corrected. But uh, yes, my question is actually to Mr. Wim Van Larry. Uh, so sorry about that if, if I mispronounced it. And um, when it comes to extreme influence uh, of Russia and extreme influence of China in the Asian region, Mongolia is usually patient, patient number one. We're exhibit one because we're highly dependent on Russian imports in terms of energy and oil. And we are highly dependent on exports when it comes to all the guests and experts who are here today. We are really so sorry that we didn't have enough time, but I think this is a starting point. And uh, really, really, we look forward that we can repeat it, uh, as we say in the Flemish index, for a howling we can, uh, uh, it's, proved, it's proven that we can uh, uh, repeat it uh, shortly. Thank you for all the colleagues and uh, for the experts and see you again in the future uh, with Ida. Thank you. Before the, before putting this in on 10, we don't uh, be... Uh, again, uh,